In my hands, listeners, is uh, Birth of the Angel, and it's COVID Murder Mystery Book 1 of 2, and uh, third one on the way. Uh, it's a, a mystery and uh, murder and robbery. It's uh, an unsolved case of, of the Gardner Museum in Boston, which, listeners, if you remember... Uh, some crafty thieves went in in a very sophisticated <laughs> way and took some true. millions of dollars of, of paintings out of there. Is that right? And they've never been found. They're currently probably a half a billion dollars of worth at the moment. Yeah, they, they came in. This is March of 1990. This is a real life event. The, the book, of course, is fiction. You told us earlier that writing was in your heart. It's a soul thing. And that's true. opportunity presented itself and uh yeah this is a, a story that i worked on for a very long time i started it i think in oh i don't know maybe oh three or oh four something like that and i wrote a version of it and i thought oh it's terrific and i showed it to some people i really respected their <laughs> opinion they went oh yeah well uh, well you, you could and they were very kind about it but it was it didn't it didn't sing it was like no nah, that didn't work so I went after it a few more times after that and refined it and refined it. And I had it finished and ready to be published. And it was uh, January, beginning of February of 2020. Story supposed to take place right now in the present. And there was no COVID in the story. And the lead character of the story is named Artemis Bookbinder. And among other things, he's a germaphobe. And so I thought, well, <laughs> this just doesn't work. We have... Um, this global pandemic and this investigator who's a germaphobe and I've missed it. I've missed the moment. So I, I pulled it and started reworking and it took me a time to get it back out again, but I did. And that complication in the story was wonderful for me to work with because it was complex and, you know, I had to really make sure I was doing it right. It dealt with issues of courage and what it's like to have an amazing fear that you have to then step through in a world that's gone crazy. You know, the caller Fred, he said, why, why do people need entertainment? And he suggested, because we're all so happy. I, I think it's the opposite. I think when things get to be a little too busy, you know, God knows the thing we've just gone through is very difficult, the COVID and it, it was stressful. So to have something that you can immerse yourself in, enjoy, like a good murder mystery. Uh, my favorite review is by actress Beth Maitland, who's one of the longtime leads of Young and the Restless, and she wrote reviews and posted them, God bless her. And her, I use her quote a lot, which is absolute mystery fun. It's like a vacation. If it works well, yes, it's a murder mystery. Yep, someone gets killed. Oh, that's not so much fun. But the exploration and the journey to step in and see what happens and how it evolves, that's the fun bit. That's the good bit. And uh, that's what these books are about. Um, COVID Murder Mysteries was a title that I found out once you start to advertise a book, social media will ban you immediately because you're using the word COVID and murder together. And that's not what Oops. this is. Yeah, well, and it's not about this. This is a murder mystery story that takes place during the time of COVID. It also is a story that's based on a real historical robbery, which is that Gardner Museum robbery. And the premise is, what if one of those paintings is found and then murder ensues? And that's where the book begins. What... Uh was your background with Gardner Museum? Oh, I was there many years ago, like people, and I walked in and I thought, this is the greatest place on the planet Earth. It just was so perfect. Uh, Isabella Stewart Gardner left her house that she had built with her full collection, which was astounding, to the city of Boston under the stipulation that nothing changed. The paintings as she arranged them, color of the walls, the furniture had to stay. God bless them, they agreed. There's other stories in art, in the art world where that didn't happen, but here, Boston with honor, they did do it. When they needed to expand the collection, and they have a world-class collection, they built an extension building, which is beautiful and astounding. I go back many years there, it was a favorite place to stand on an interior window and look out at that courtyard, which is, it's, it's amazing, the feeling of it, and the gentleness of it, and then turn around and there's this, masterpiece picture behind you 
um, like the Rembrandt storm on the Sea of Galilee, where the Christ figure is sitting in the boat with this very peaceful look on his face and all the disciples are pulling at the rigging and they're panicked. And that is one of the stolen paintings. That's one of the ones that was taken in March 1990, never found, except, of course, in my book, where it's the one that's found. Perfect. And I have been to the Gardner Museum, but it was so many years ago. But you, your description just brought me right back, the serenity of the garden and stuff. And for the record, I had nothing to do with um, – the robbery or the murder in his book. Uh, I was I was young and loose and fancy free, but I didn't I didn't take the paintings. Um, it was it was St. Patrick's Day night. It happened on March 18th at the wee hours of the morning, but people have been reveling all all the time. So I don't know. It could have been you. Yeah, no, yeah, maybe in a blackout. But it it does uh, sort of um, po- you ponder stealing. You know, millions and millions of dollars worth of art that is well known, Check. documented, can't be marketed readily. <laughs> right. It's the opening scene of, of the book, which is what, where is it? And we start with a, a very wealthy art collector in Long Island, and he turns towards his mantelpiece, he hits a couple of buttons, and from behind a wall piece, the wall opens up and the painting slides forward. And he has to always keep it hidden. That's the exact question, is who would do it? What would they do with it? What would you have to go through? So you were the only person who gets to see it? It's a strange idea. And so that, yeah, that's where I started. It is. It's quite remarkable. Um, so you mentioned uh, something that writers out there should take note of, that you know, you you had a a draft of something that you thought was quite complete and uh your friends um in a in a kind of a kind way (laughs) said well it's not quite there um but you stuck at it what was your what was your writing routine what was your discipline to well when i first was working on it i was holding down a full-time job in television so it was it was difficult i'd have to take breaks and kind of walk away for a while but Eventually, when we got here, I could really concentrate on it, which was part of the motivation. We needed a place quiet to work. And so here in Vermont, I've really started to progress on it in a major way. Um, I took lots of things from all the earlier drafts, of course. My mother was a big murder mystery fan and um, pivotal to the story, as I mentioned, Artemis. It's also about his son, who at the beginning of the story is 11 or 12, is a genius kid. And it's about this father-son component and how they work together and how they both become as that evolves. So those findings, took, that was the bit she liked best, so I kept that. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. And I imagine that there's a little bit of Vince O'Brien and uh, Connell relationship here, right? Yeah, it well, you asked about rewrites, and I said I started on this book a long time ago. That's true. The early version of it was more like a book for young adults, and it wasn't in exactly what I intended. I thought I was writing this contemporary adult book. And my dad, who never said anything unkind to me, notably about work, said, well, I, I like the description of the Ansonia. The characters live in the Ansonia Hotel in New York. And that's all he said. And I went, oh, dear, that's really bad. <laughs> that's, that really didn't work. Did he, he found something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like that one bit. And as I said, my mother, she liked the, the father-son um, complication and how they work together. So I took both of those bits and kind of celebrated um, – the New York City locales it takes place all over the world, the story, but notably that and the father son relationship, because what they said mattered a lot. Yes, for sure. It's a great book, Birth of the Angels. Uh, and with the um, local bookstores around uh, here in Waterbury is uh, Bridgeside Books, right um, right on Stowe Street. And, and your book is in other it's, places it's around. It's there, yeah. And thank you. A shout out to Katya and Jenna and Maddie at Bridgeside Books. They hosted a book signing for me in November when the second book came out, which was amazing. They are great people. The store is fantastic. And we love the independent bookstores. We're there. We're at Bear Pond in Montpelier. We're at Bear Pond in Stowe. So thank you to those stores as well. And, of course, we're, it's available everywhere, e-books and whatnot, 
look about and you'll find it. Yeah, no, I did um, download it from Amazon on the weekend to my phone, and uh, so it's easy to get. It's uh, Birth of the Angel. You can uh, Google Connell O'Brien. You'll learn a lot about um, his career in um, directing soap operas. His dad, Vince O'Brien, was an actor and was in Woody, a Woody Allen film, Annie Hall. Uh, and in your books, in your writing, wh- what is the educational heart piece for you? Sometimes in books we want to, there's a life lesson. Is there a life lesson in the books? That oh, you- absolutely. These books are about the joy of surviving. It's intended to be, as I said, a fun ride. It's intended to be a mystery story that you enjoy, like any good mystery story. But it's, I think, a celebration of why live. My book has no gore. It, it has no horror. It is about um, the people. It's about the people on this journey to find, first of all, the stolen art from the Gardner Museum, but also to find each, themselves and each other. The, the painting you describe, it, it breaks my heart that it's missing, Me right? Too. Uh, Me too. It's astounding. Yeah. Because it is it's such a, a, a magical piece of art. And uh, so if you've got that painting um, listening audience, uh, mm-hmm. why don't you just bring it back, drop it off at the Gardner Museum, no harm, no foul. And Apparently the Gardner will give you a very large reward for doing so, no questions asked. I think it's in the millions by now, maybe five or ten million. And let and let the world enjoy the art, not, not in a living room somewhere. Um, brilliant book book by Connell O'Brien, Birth of the Angel. It's one of two that are out, a third one on the way. And, you know, we'll, we'll want to have you back uh, when uh, the new book comes out and we talk a little bit more about that. I'd and love that. Uh, Thank you, Brad. And Brad, you make this so easy. Thank you very much. Oh, you're quite welcome. Uh, it's Birth of the Angel. Connell O'Brien is the author. You can get it at your local bookstores. We want to support them. You can also get them, you know, you can order online. You can download Uh, It's real easy. Birth of the Angel, Connell O'Brien. And thanks for being with us. Thanks again, Brad.